guys, welcome back. I'm so happy that you're here today. We are talking about pumping at work. Pumping is hard, breastfeeding is hard, buying formula is hard, feeding babies is hard. Why is it so dang hard? I do not know, but I totally feel you. I get it. That's why today I wanna to give you my top five tips, which actually includes quite a bit more information than just five tips. It's five categories of tips, I guess for being successful in pumping at work. I feel well qualified to discuss this given that I've now pumped three times for four babies while working crazy hours as a medical student, a resident, and an attending physician. And I wanna share with you the top five ways that I feel like I've been successful in this journey. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more like it. We will be back with the content right after this. <laughs> All right, let's just jump right into it. Isn't that what all the cool YouTubers say? Tip number one in this category we are going to be talking about advocating for yourself. You are legally allowed to have time to pump at work. Your job in almost every state is required to not only provide you time, but a place to pump breast milk for your baby. The second part of this, advocating for yourself, is to plan ahead. Let the people you work with and your boss, if applicable, know that you're going to be pumping when you come back from your maternity leave. Plan it into your schedule, have a set time that you're going to do it, and just do it. It's never going to be easy to leave what you're doing and go pump. No matter what kind of job you have, this is going to be tough but you will only be successful if you're diligent about advocating for yourself, planning ahead, and sticking to that schedule. It can be really helpful if you tell the people that you're working with that you plan on pumping and that you're going to work that into your schedule. That way, if they need you during that time, they can call, or if you're comfortable with it, they can come knock on the door and ask you a question, whatever works for you. Just make sure you're communicating with your team and the people around you. On that same note, Protect your time fiercely. You will have to stand up for this time to be used in the way that you want it. Again, it's never easy. You will feel like you're inconveniencing somebody. You will feel like you're leaving when something is going on. And obviously, if you work a job where you can't just leave, you're going to need to be flexible. But by and large, most jobs can get by for just a few minutes without you and you need to be fiercely protective of this time if pumping while you're at work is important to you. So to review those things in the advocate for yourself group, you are legally allowed to pump. You need to plan ahead and try to schedule it as much as possible. Communicate with your team, your boss, everybody who might rely on you about what your plan is and protect your time fiercely. Moving on to number two optimize your setup. What I mean by this is have a place to pump that has all of the gear and equipment that makes this easy. For me, the first of those things is a hands-free pumping bra. I have one that I've been using for a very long time. I got it off Amazon. I will link it below. I have a new one that I'm hoping to try out soon and I'll let you guys know if I like that one as well. And this lets me pump and also do something else. Even if it's not necessarily work, although I usually chart while I am pumping, it just keeps you from having to hold the pump in place. It's just way easier to pump for the length of time you need to fully empty if you're not having to hold the pump on you. Another thing you can do if possible is leave your pump at work. I wasn't able to do this when I was pumping with the twins or with Milo. Now I have the option to leave my pump at work, which is really nice. It saves me from having to carry it back and forth. If that's not an option, make sure you have a really great pump bag. And I will also link the Amazon link to the pump bag I'm currently using because it is by far my favorite pump bag that I have ever used. It fits my pump, all the parts, everything I need for work, my laptop, my tripod because how could I function without a tripod? All of those things that I need on a daily basis fit in this backpack and it's super handy. So I will link that and I should just do a full review on that because I really love it. In between pumping sessions, keep those parts in the fridge. Bring a gallon Ziploc baggie, put the pump parts in the bag, zip it up, keep them in a refrigerator. This saves you time and makes you more efficient because you don't have to wash your pump parts every single time that you pump. This will take 
probably 30 minutes out of your full day if you're pumping two or three times a day and saves you a lot of effort also. And it's a safe way to store your pump parts. Just finish pumping, stick them in a Ziploc bag, put it in the fridge with the milk, and next time when you're ready to pump, you just get them out and do it again. When you get home in the evenings, you can wash and sterilize all the pump pieces for the day, and then you only have to do that one time. This decreases how much time I spend washing pump parts significantly and has changed my pump life amazingly. It's really great. If you have a space where you can keep something in a refrigerator, just put your pump parts in a Ziploc baggie, stick them in the fridge, pump, wash everything at the end of the day and sterilize it when you get home. The other thing I use to decrease how much I'm washing is I used to pump in two bottles and then store them and then pump into new bottles the next time. Now what I'm doing, and it has changed my life so much, and I don't know why I didn't think about it earlier because it's really super easy, is to pump into bottles and then go ahead and pour those into bags so that when I get home, I can either put those in the freezer or send them to daycare the next day. The bags that I'm currently loving were sent to me by Nano Baby, and I'll show them to you here. They are shaped like this, and it's really nice because they, they freeze very flat, and you can stack them in the little organizer. So it has like a little organizer here. You just freeze the milk, then stack it. And when you go to take it out for using some of it, pull out the one on the bottom so that you're always constantly putting new ones on top and using the oldest one. So I love this system and I love these bags. The shape lets them thaw a lot quicker, I feel like. The bags are super thick. They have the double Ziploc at the top. I'm never really worried about them spilling. I really like them. So the brand is Nano Baby. And again, they aren't sponsoring this video, but they did send me them for free to try out. And I really like them. I like the system. I like the organization. I like the way they freeze. They've been reliable for keeping the milk where it belongs and not spilling all of that stuff. So. Pumping into two bottles, pouring that into bags so that when I get home, I just get it ready for daycare the next day or put it in the freezer and only have to wash two bottles has really changed how efficient I am in pumping and cleaning my pump parts. So I've really liked that. So to review number two, optimizing your setup, have some particular gear that you like, a hands-free bra, some bags like the Nano Baby bags that you really like to pump into, Use a Ziploc baggie with your pump parts in the fridge between pumps so you don't have to spend time pumping, washing, sterilizing every single time. And leave your pump at work if you can. And if you can't, have a great pump bag to make it easy to transport back and forth from work to home. Number three, set yourself up for success. Wherever you're pumping, you need to have pictures of the baby around. This will help you with letdown, will help you with keeping your supply up, will help you with pumping efficiently. So have your phone or pictures of the baby or videos of the baby. This really does help. I know it sounds kind of weird to people who've never done it, but you will see a big difference if you pump where you have your baby with you while you're doing it. The second part of that is to use some kind of pumping technique that makes you more successful with pumping and improves your pumping output. My favorite is what we call hands-on pumping. I will link below to a Kelly Mom website, which is the best breastfeeding and pumping resource ever. It's totally evidence-based. It's wonderful. It has tons of information on how to do hands-on pumping, but it's essentially massaging to help the milk come out more efficiently and in higher volumes than if you were just sitting there pumping and not helping at all. So I'll link to that below so that you guys can kind of learn about it. And maybe I'll try to do a video on it sometime as well. You need to stay hydrated and feed yourself. Keep some snacks in your bag. Make sure you're eating breakfast and lunch when you're at work or on your way to work or whatever your schedule is and drink plenty of water. I am so bad about this. I never drink enough water. I drink too much coffee. It's always like that, but I'm going to preach this to you and hope that it reflects back to me. It's really important that you're drinking plenty of water and staying hydrated and eating healthy when you're trying to pump milk for your baby. So to review number three, set yourself up for success. Keep baby pics and videos handy so that you can look at them while you're pumping. Use a hands-on pumping technique, which I have linked to the Kelly Mom website below so that you can learn how to do that. And make sure you're taking care of yourself. Focus on hydration, nutrition, and self-care 
because pumping is a big job and it is hard. Make sure you take care of yourself. Number four, plan your wardrobe. What does that mean? It is very hard to pump wearing a dress. No matter if you're pumping in a private room with the door locked or in the middle of your office, pumping in a dress is almost impossible. You have to bring it all the way up this way or all the way down this way. It's completely impractical, it takes forever. I never wear dresses if I'm planning to pump because it just isn't practical unless you have a specific nursing dress. So when I go to work, for me, I'm usually wearing scrubs. So what I do is wear a tank top underneath my scrub top. I can pull that tank top and my nursing bra down, put on my hands-free pumping bra. And when I put the pump pieces in, I can just pull my scrub top down and it almost acts as a cover. I don't really feel the need to cover up when I'm pumping. I pump in my office. I do share my office, but it doesn't really bother me. I have one other person in my office and she doesn't care if I'm pumping. Another thing that I've seen people do is a nursing top with a jacket or a um, button up top that comes down easily, things like that. There's particular nursing clothing that makes this easy and then also some hacks that you can do to make it a little bit easier for you. If you don't wanna plan your wardrobe like that or if you're just not comfortable with just pumping with your shirt over your shoulders or however you've planned your wardrobe, you can also use a breastfeeding cover up. I remember in residency when we would pump in the resident lounge and there would be other people around that a lot of the residents would bring a breastfeeding cover, you know, the ones that kind of have a wire in the top that lays down over and they would use that and put it over them when they pumped and then they wouldn't feel the need to go away to a pumping room because sometimes it's not practical to go halfway across the hospital to pump in private uh, when there's tons of things to do and so they would just wear that over it, pump at the computers and when they were done they would take it all up and it was fine. So it always depends on your work environment, but that's a really good option if you feel like you're comfortable enough pumping around other people, but you don't want to be all out there. So that's totally up to you, but it is a nice trick if you want to pump around other people. So to review number four, plan your wardrobe, avoid dresses. You can wear a tank top under a looser top or under a scrub top. You can use a nursing cover. There's a whole bunch of options look into your options, figure out what you like, and plan your wardrobe. Number five, don't panic and be kind to yourself. What do I mean by this? If your supply drops, if you're having trouble, if something is going on that makes you worry this is not gonna work out, don't panic. You have a lot of options for increasing your milk supply, for supplementing if you need to, for not pumping if that becomes what's easier or best for you and your baby. Just be kind to yourself. It doesn't matter what your friends did. It doesn't matter what I did. It doesn't matter what anyone did. You need to do what's best for you and for baby. At some point, pumping might be more stressful and weigh on you more than it's worth. Of course, I advocate for breast milk and I think that's really important. But I also have women who come in and say, they are just incredibly depressed. They're sad, they're crying. They feel like they failed because they can't make pumping out work work out for them. And it breaks my heart. And these women need to be told that it is okay to make a change in your plan. If it's not working and you feel like this is more hassle than it's worth, it is okay to change your plan. Please know that. I think it is really important to give you all the tools that you need to be successful when you want to pump at work, but I also think it's equally important to tell you guys to be kind to yourself, work through problems, and if you need to change the plan, just change the plan. There's no shame in supplementing, in not pumping, in pumping until the baby is two. Whatever you decide to do on this journey is okay. Give yourself permission to be okay. Be kind to yourself and don't panic if things aren't going exactly like you had hoped. So to review number five, don't panic and be kind to yourself. It takes time to work out the kinks. Things will come up that you need to figure out. Your supply will fluctuate and this is okay. Just be kind to yourself and don't panic. Know that it's okay to change your plans. If it's not working out or if you need to do something differently, it will be okay, but just don't be afraid to change your plan and know that everything will work out in the end. Be kind to yourself. 
don't panic and give yourself permission to make a change in your plans. This is so important guys and I hope that you will hear me when I say it is okay to change your plan. I hope these tips have been helpful. Like this video if you got anything useful out of it. Subscribe if you want to see more like it and I will see you back next time.